Good morning from Care of Ass and Taters. <laughs> oh, my neck doesn't do that. <laughs> Happy Taters Tuesday. Oh, no talking for me. Bye, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to do all the videoing, none of the paddling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, we're a few weeks into our journey. I think our bodies have really adjusted to paddling. Yeah. I'm not waking up with my upper back really sore anymore. Now when I wake up, um, the only thing that's really sore is my fingers, interestingly. So when I first kind of uncurl my fingers in the morning, that really hurts a lot. Because <laughs> you're sitting there all night. <laughs> but then, you know, you uh, curl and open them a few times and they get warmed up. Guess who's 10 years younger and guess whose shoulders are. You know, eh. Today we have two locks to go through, lock five and lock five A. Some of us are trying to work here. I don't think there's easy portage around either of those, so we're gonna hope that the wait is not too long. Aww. And then shortly after that, we're gonna try to meet up with a nice river angel in the town of Winona, who's gonna help us get a mini USB charger. That's the charger that we need for our marine radio, but we realized we don't have it and <laughs> we have all the other chargers <laughs> just missing that one yeah that mini usb is not used very often but um that marine radio has been really really helpful and interesting giving us a lot of context as we go up to the locks so we really Ooh. don't want to be without it i wanted to talk to tugboats more but turns out they're mean so screw them but that's not accurate captain angry pants that's not fair no it's pretty fair <laughs> And not only are we covered with a whole heck of a lot of dew, but we are back in the smoke lands. Turtle egg, I think. We've been seeing the nests like this along the shore, lots of them in the last day or two. Not sure how to tell if the turtles have actually hatched and gone down to the river or been eaten by something. And right where we're about to launch our boat, we found this big clam at the end of his track. And we are off into the smoke. Interestingly enough, we have two locks within a fairly close distance up here. Lock 5 and Lock 5A. We keep uh, meaning to look up what's up with the numbering because uh, Jen commented that there is a number missing further up. And of course, there's a Lock 0, which is the one they closed. The navigation channel is marked with red and green buoys. The green rectangular buoys are always on the right side of the channel. And then the red triangular ones, like those ones off in the distance, are on the left side of the channel. So these are really helpful because as long as we stay on the right side of the green or left side of the red, then we know that we're out of the channel. We don't have to worry about getting in anyone's way. And they also help us tell which one is the main channel when it's not obvious so we don't have to look at google maps sometimes we see one of the buoys washed up on the shore too so i guess they not get knocked over when it's flooding and we have reached lock five there is no sign of any tugboats at least for the moment uh, and we are deciding instead of trying the radio, we are just going to go up and pull the cord today. That was satisfying. Okay, thank you. We'll be with you. We had no response to the pull cord, though it did make a nice loud honk over there somewhere. Um, however, when I called on the radio, they got right back to me. We are currently waiting for the chamber to fill, and they say it's about 15 minutes, so... Looks like it's just out us out here this morning. So we had no water movement when we came in, but they've started uh, cycling the lock. You can see that red light blinking and we are drifting towards the intake here. <laughs> no so the guy comes out to talk us through this. Once we're inside, they have us hold on to a rope to prevent us from uh, basically bouncing off the walls. And then they close the doors behind us and spend about 15 minutes cycling the water through. 
The first lock was just massive and had a huge drop. This one was only about nine feet and some of them are just a couple of feet. Depending on the lock, in some cases, the lock employee comes over, asks us what we're doing and wants to chat. Sometimes they're just ignoring us and talking to the tugboats up the channel. Once it finishes, we wait for the doors to open, they sound a horn, and then we are on our way. So Tater very much loves turtles, so I, uh, I tend to notice them before her. So I'm always pointing them out to her. The funny thing is, oftentimes they do that. <laughs> and plop down, which she alternately finds hilarious and then feels bad because they spent like an hour getting up there and then plop down. Out on the Swanee, we actually had them like three or four feet up in the air and they would hit like kathunk. Nothing beats the AT though, where I called her up and I'm like, hey, come here, come here. And she like <laughs> ran up and I was like, no, stop, you're about to step on the turtle. And she just wigged out. <laughs> Don't worry, the turtle was safe, but. <laughs> that was such a surprise. <laughs> yeah. So many turtle shoots. Never a turtle when I have the camera out. Thank you. We are approaching lock 5A. <laughs> and they're talking to us. <laughs> they're talking to us. They have cleared the way for us. They told us just to just come on through. Cleared the way? <laughs> yeah, they, they just exported several ships out the bay. So. <laughs> you know what I mean. They prepped the lock for us. Because we were coming from uh, California and Colorado, so okay. yeah, it ended up working out. <laughs> Had a couple of days off, came and did this. Um, as soon as this is done, I go back to Colorado and basically finish the section I didn't do, plus a little extra as a time. So that was the most efficient uh, lock traversal we have hit yet. Those guys actually in the uh, party barge uh, held the elevator for us, which was nice. They actually work at Enlightened Equipment, it turns out. As usual, we have schedule problems. We've made too good a time because there's been no lock delays. So we're actually about two hours early for our trail angel. So I came up with a perfect plan, which Taters is even in, char in uh, agreement with, which is we go to the brewery and we wait for the angel there. However long, however many pitchers, we can do that. And um, maybe on an empty stomach. And then uh, Taters can run over to Walmart. Or you can send me after I've had a pitcher of beer and am craving candy. That might be. I like this plan because <laughs> I'm picturing paddling out of Winona the same way that hiking out of Unionville was on the AT. And that was highly, highly entertaining. Is that the one where I was singing and uh, saying that we needed to have gotten a third pitcher? Yes. Was that the one where you were almost bodily thrown out of the bar by the uh, like okay. owner's wife? That, we don't need to remember that part. But that's, that's the part I remember. She walked in with a little thing of ice cream and that lady was going to take her out. <laughs> it's one of two times I can remember somebody almost taking her out. The other was when we walked into a federal building to get a caving permit and you know they scan you they got to scan everything and jen tried to just like shove past a very large black woman with a sidearm and that lady just about like took her the hell out <laughs> me and my friend were sitting there watching that going oh wow that was almost fun i didn't see the scanner i was just so excited to get our caving permit she didn't see the scanner the large woman with the sidearm or anything until she got quite loud and in her face so yeah <laughs> I just found so many turtles for taters. Every little lump on that log is a little turtle. And there were even a couple others that hopped off. All the sounds of civilization.
Welcome to Winona, home of Enlightened Equipment, and more importantly, a brewery! It's in smaller boats. I wasn't expecting full-on uh, triple-decker uh, cruise ships, but okay. We're going to go to a brewery, and we're going to have to get the boat out of the water, because otherwise Jen has to sit here and I go to the brewery and maybe come back at some point. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the low water, this is going to be a little fun. That's the first tug we've seen this morning. And he is empty. Look at how high those front ones are. So for me, the cart has already been worth every ounce of its weight. <laughs> By saving our butt on multiple portages. However, for Matt, the primary reason that convinced him to get the cart was to be able to wheel the boat into town and hang out at breweries, which we are finally having a good opportunity to do now. <laughs> And here, here is Taters with her beer pile. <laughs> Hopefully Goat doesn't show up and buy us a whole bunch of very alcoholic beer, because remember that one day on the PCT? Uh, goat. Good times. Yeah, I, I ended up on a bathroom floor afterwards, because it turns <laughs> out you don't want 9% beer after you've been uh, hiking all day. So see, Taters over there is a vegetarian. When I went in, they had pizza, they were all excited, but the options were taco, double cheeseburger, or double meat which I'm like, I'm okay with all those. But then I told the bartenderess that uh, my girlfriend is a vegetarian and she said, and I quote in French, oh shit. <laughs> so we sent taters for pizza. Thanks for watching out for me. My pinky is up, it's sophisticated. <laughs> oh, we're gonna do all the paddling today. <laughs> Good stop, other than Jen won't get me any more beer and says I have to paddle now. They really do not make it easy to get in and out of the water at this town. <laughs> if we weren't severely motivated by beer and pizza, I don't know that we would have done it. One might wonder, why is all the stuff here and Jen way down there? I know that's what I'm wondering. It's all good, man. Okay, finally got Taters out of the brewery and now we are back on the river. So basically the deal is I got the boat in and out of the water. So now I take a nap and Taters is going to paddle <laughs> another 12 miles to the next lock. That Good job, Taters. Taters Tuesday. Yeah. Uh-huh. Stupid man, this things. Mm. The river angel that helped us out with a ride to Walmart to get our cable was actually someone who had paddled the river last year. So that was really cool to get to talk to him, uh, get some tips and advice and what to expect on the later part of the river. I don't think we managed to get Matt quite as much beer as on the epic uh, Unionville stop, but I did get him one to go, so I am hoping for some jubilance into camp today. I'm hoping Jen's not gonna get us run over by that party bar. Hey Blondie, how do you spell division of labor? <laughs> and we are seeing if we can make it past lock six tonight which is the lock after lock 5A, which is the lock after lock five, because this is how we do numbering out here. So we are currently in that time of day that we just love, end of the day. We've got a little bit of a headwind, but nothing too bad. And we're having to make the same debate. Both of us would kind of really like to push on to lock six, which is only about four or so miles away. However, we'd probably be through there at 10, meaning we'd be in the dark on the far side trying to find a camp and whatnot. So we may end up staying at this island over here. We kind of don't have to worry about being distracted by the sounds of nature out here. Between the trains, the boats, and the uh, a-hole motorcycles over there. <laughs> uh -huh. We think that's probably a tug lining up somewhere around the lock. See, still pretty sounds of nature once the trains are gone. In between trains. In between, yeah. Fortunately, there is a promising island just a little bit before six, so we can probably make something work back here. We're just really hoping for a sandbar or something easy. 
so much for our beta. We're currently trying to find spots without a whole lot of luck here. <laughs> Figures. Beautiful spots all morning, and then when we need them, nothing. And fun times. We were crawling around in the brush. We got something that'll work, but this is very much not ideal. And the spot the beta led us to was even worse. Welcome to 10 o'clock at night, somewhere in southern Minnesota. Really nice paddling conditions today, smooth, calm water all day. Uh, great luck with the locks. We just cruised through lock 5 and 5A, which was lovely. Uh, really nice brewery stop in Winona with the River Angel and then a couple hours of idyllic paddling in the evening. Only uh, drawback is the camping tonight, definitely a non-ideal site. We got a lot of vegetation around. The sand on top is dry. But if you put too much pressure on it, like if you get down uh, and kind of kneel on your knees like I did for a second there sitting at the tent, you start getting warm water coming up through the sand. And we had a some kind of boat, we're guessing fishing boat of some sort with really bright floodlights that slowly crawled pa past our island and then went back at about 1045 at night. So hopefully it's not going to do any more laps. Home sweet home for the night.